All right, everyone. All right, everyone. So what I want to do is implement being able to remove classes from our database. So you should have a copy of uh, Tuesday's file, uh, the my pouch DB project. That was the HTML one. I'm going to rename it to today's date. And then uh, if we open it up, remember this is what we've got: simply the pouch JavaScript file, and then the HTML file. And then as a preview. When we finished last time, and, and some of you left, remember we ended and the project wasn't quite working in, in uh, Eclipse? Well, it's because we forgot to tell Eclipse, use that file. So we'll get back to that. But in any event, in this case, let's edit the My Pouch file from Tuesday. Edit with Notepad to run it. We want to populate it with a little bit of data, so run it in Chrome. Remember, Chrome is useful because then it'll allow us to read the database content and clear it out a little easier. So go ahead and run, run it in Chrome. I notice the very first time I do this, it's a little slow. There we go. I'm just going to populate it with some data. Show classes. So maybe three, maybe three records, three classes. So let's get to this point. Just uh, put in three classes into your database. Uh, we've been able to add a class, show classes. Here's what. Here's my concept. I want people to be able to see this. And then say, okay, uh, I want to remove class one, two, three. Maybe I took it. Uh, so there's going to be an input box. You put in, you know, CRN number one, two, three, and press remove class, and it's gone. So the concept of it is very easy, very straightforward, but the implementation of it will need a little bit of setup. And I did uh, research the best one of the ways to do this. And so what I came up with was, uh, I, of course, I went back to the pouchdb.com, back to their API, and I went to go, I, I, I looked at the um, the API about removing records. So over at the API, there's delete a doc. We've got db.remove, the particular document you're dealing with, and then options like a callback. Um, we can also remove it by specifically mentioning a document ID and its revision. So this uh, method deletes a document. Doc is required to be a document with at least an ID and a rev property. Sending the full document will also work. Okay, and that's the slightly tricky part because um, it says here in order to delete a document we have to call it by name and revision number. Wait a minute, we never, we never put any revision numbers in. Pouch does it internally. And it's a huge string, like, you know, 64 characters. So their implementation here is pretty cool. They say first db.get to fetch a particular document with its ID. And then the result of that is either an error or a positive result, of course. The positive result, then, we're going to implement here with actually db remove doc. So what this is doing is when we do db.get, it's basically telling you, tell me the information about that document. Tell me uh, its ID, its, uh, its other parameters, and also its revision. So we capture that, or it, it built in, it captures that data under doc. So here we are able to specify the ID number and the revision by first getting a particular record. So we're going to use this, basically, to remove a particular class. All right, so what we'll do in the code here, I want, after we display, the only reason we would want the input field to remove the class, the only time we would want it is after we've got classes. So my concept is I want those that remove button to appear after we've got classes, at the same time that I load the table, perhaps. So we're going to add to what is displayed on screen after you show classes. So let's scroll down to the area where we display the table, which is line, specifically line 60. So line 60, that's where we say div.innerHTML equals string. That's the string 
that included all of that data. The start of the table, row by row, at the end of the table. We're going to add another piece to that string. And we could continue to add it on line 59, but I'm going to separate it just for conceptually because the next line that will be displayed on screen will be the place to remove the classes. So on line 60, make yourself a new line, and we'll call the string here again, plus equals. Remember, plus equals appends to whatever is already in the variable. If it was simply equals, it would replace it. Plus equals adds to it. Open, close quote. And inside of here, we're going to say uh, a bunch of little things. We're going to say we're going to create an input box so that per a person can write the CRN number. So we will write input, the input tag, which does not have an opening and closing pair. We give it a bunch of parameters. So inside of input, then we will say type equals single quote, single quote. And obviously, this is going to be very important or else things will get confused. Open double quote, close double quote, open single quote, close single quote. The type of input box is text. It'll accept text. And in order for us to read what a person wrote into that, it should have an ID equals single quote, single quote. And I'm calling this delete CRN, capital CRN. This is going to be an input box. A person will type class number one, two, three. And then there'll be a button that'll say delete that class. So continuing inside of the quotes. We will implement it. Obviously, it can be done a variety of ways. We'll do it this way for contrast. We'll create a button tag slash button. We could, of course, also do input type um, uh, type of submit, but uh, I ran into a bit of issues there. So we'll doing we'll do it this way. We're saying here's a button, and the button will say delete CRN. Save it and run it, and then click Show Classes just to confirm that this displays on screen. We should get an input box and a button. Check your spelling and run it. I'm going to do Show Classes because I've already got a few classes built in that I just populated. And then we've got that input box which is a little too close for comfort, but we can fix that later. And then a button that says CRN. You can type in there, of course. That's my code so far. So notice, I can display any HTML on screen. Um, I'm adding it to the string, and then I'm actually rendering it as HTML because of inner HTML here. On screen on the div, it's inner HTML, show what's ever in string, which we built a lot of stuff into that string. Now, in order for this button to do anything, though, we're going to give it an on click to call a function, which we will create in a moment. So continuing with our button here, on click equals single quote, single quote. We'll call it delete classes, capital C. Open close uh, curly brace. Uh, I'm sorry, open close parentheses. So an alternate could be putting a delete button next to the a delete button next to each class? Each, yeah, each class. Sure. Sure, each row in the table? Row, yeah. yeah. How does it want to enter this? Yeah, there's many ways to implement it this way. I'm giving the user the 
ability to write which class they want to delete rather than maybe cluttering the interface a little bit with a lot of delete buttons next to it. Right here you have just one input and one button and then it does it, but it is the extra effort of typing the class. Sure. All right, so uh, you should save that and run it. And it doesn't do anything yet. Oh, yes, semicolon right there. Not necessary, but I've been usually doing that, so I'll continue that. Um, so let's save that and run it. It doesn't do anything yet. And what we will do then is define this delete function. Isn't it this uh, misleading that it's not deleting multiple classes, but deleting a single class, so we shouldn't call it delete class? Well, I think also on what we wrote previously over here, now remember, this is internal, so the user won't see it, but up here we've been calling a show table of classes, show classes, yeah, yeah, so it doesn't... There it's multiple add classes. We did it there too, so sure, you know. When we're in the beginning stages of doing all of the information architecture, this is when we really write that down to make sure we're consistent. Um, okay, so we're going to continue then, and now we need to define what does that what does that actually do, delete classes. So we'll say, uh, we'll go back up to above or actually after, just logically. We've got show table of classes and then after table of classes still within the script, so give yourself a couple of lines to line 64, and we'll start to define what that brand new function call is. So function show uh, delete classes, open close parentheses, open close curly brace, close curly brace semicolon, Okay, so I want to capture what the person typed in that input box right here. This input box. So we'll create a variable to hold it. Line 65, VAR. We'll call it the class. And we'll fill it with the value of the delete CRN input box. So again, document dot get element by ID dot value. We need to say which ID. So in quotes, the one right above delete CRN. Just to be sure we're on the right track, I'm going to add an alert here. And we'll say we're about to delete class or CRN plus the class. So let's save it and run it. And at this point, what should happen is that if a user types in any CRN number, not, uh, not a valid one, we'll get to that error correction in a moment, but if a person types anything into the input box and clicks delete the class, at least what should happen is a pop-up appears that knows what's the class that the person just typed. And we've captured it here by looking at the value of delete CRN, that input box. Check your spelling. Remember, get element by ID is spelled like that. And I want to see what that looks like, so I'll run it. Show class, I'll just type whatever. Delete CRN, pop up, you're about to delete class, etc. So it is seeing what I'm typing into this input box up here. Is it good for everyone? All right, 
So then we need to uh, basically implement what the API just told us about. First, we need to retrieve the, the ID number um, and its revision. So on the next line, we can comment out that alert. We'll say db.get. That has an open close parenthesis, semicolon. There's going to be a lot inside of this, so we're going to break it up into several lines. At the very end, you're going to see all of these floating um, parentheses, closing parentheses and closing curly braces. It'll be a little hairy, but that's why I kind of do it this way, uh, where I, you know, I open and close the thing, and then I press enter to push it down. Uh, and uh, yeah, careful, because a few people I've noticed the we do this, and then you don't press enter, and you type your code, and you close it there. So it's kind of a hard way to, I don't know if there's a very easy way to kind of teach people, like, well, it needs to open and close, and there's going to be a bunch of closing and opening um, pairs. And the way I do it is open and close, and then break it down like that. Because, of course, it could be all one long line, but then that's very unwieldy. Uh, so continuing the line 68 of get, we're saying which record? The one called the class, which is what we captured a moment ago. Comma, function. This is a callback function because we want to capture that data and do something with it. So a function allows us to actually do something. That's got an open and close parentheses, an anonymous function. And it's got an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace, which I put on the next line. I'll tab that over also. All right, so whenever we use db.get, we feed it the parameter of the class, and then it returns to us either an error or the result. So inside of this function, we need to account for that. Error, or error, comma, doc. If there's an error, we'll deal with the error with the data that comes back from error. And if we do get the document, the class, we'll deal with that data. In order to make that decision, we'll do an if statement. At this point, though, I'm going to assume that we've got the positive result. If we had get the negative result, nothing really happens. So I'm going to go with the positive result. So the next line, 69, I'm going to say this is the actual part where we can remove the data, db.remove. Open, close, parentheses. And then I'm going to break that down to the next line. So to actually use remove, we need to say which um, record in the database, and we're captured that via doc. Because up here, we're trying to get a class, whatever class the user types in. It gives us the result, which includes the revision number, which the revision, which is what we need. So we're saying there, this is the class, this is the ID and the revision, comma. Here uh, is another place where we get uh, a callback function to deal with the positive result, the negative result. So we'll say again, function, open, close, parentheses, open, curly brace, close, curly brace. We'll clean up perhaps those, all of those spaces and such a little later. This is what I'm saying. We're going to see a lot of sad faces. And then so inside of that, 
Again, we could have an error or the positive response in here from the API, so they call it response. Response. Positive response, so to speak. And now inside of that, that's when we can make the decision. If there's an error, deal with it like this, or if there's no error, deal with it like that. So we'll say if, open close parentheses, open curly brace, close curly brace, The if that I'm checking for is, did we get a response? Did we get actually a positive results? Meaning, did we remove the class that we're trying to remove? This is, whenever we have if, it's always checking for something to be positive, to be true. Is the thing that we're checking for true? And if we write simply response, we're checking is it does it exist is there a response if there is a response and it's true then we'll do everything inside of here and we'll deal with an else in a moment which would be the opposite of not true so we have if response and inside of that we will give some um, We will give uh, on screen. We will so uh, we will clear out the box because this one here. Once at this point, I suppose if we test it, it'll probably work. But if we do delete it, we don't get any feedback. The feedback simply that I want is that this clears itself out, and also the row actually removes itself because it's not going to dynamically remove itself. If I remove class two, three, four. It'll do it, but nothing will show up unless we refresh loading the table. So I'm going to have both of those things happen here. If we did manage to remove the class, I want to clear out that input box. So we'll say document dot get element by ID dot value. We'll uh, empty the value and specifically for the element we called delete CRN. Question? Is there a variable for that? You know, for the class, can we just refer to that? Say that again? We have uh, the, uh, that very uh, uh, object reference uh, mm -hmm. called the class, mm -hmm. uh, three lines above where you are right now. Mm -hmm. Can we just use uh, the class that value? Or just that? Oh, let's see that. That only has the value in it. Yeah. This is this is grabbing the actual value, not not the input box. Okay. It might not work. Yeah. Okay. And then on the next line, we're going to say, well, show the table again. Where at? Response. Response. Oops. Thank you. Here you go. Response. Um, so I want to blank out that field and then also show the table again because it's a new implementation and needs to be displayed again. So we'll simply call the show um, classes function. Question. Wouldn't the show classes function, doesn't that clear everything out and, and reload it again so that you wouldn't have to... Um, the line above is removing the value in the input box. But when you do show classes, doesn't that create that, the input box? So it would create an empty We can check. I don't think so. I think it still keeps it in yeah, it's memory. Still sitting on the DOM. Yeah, it's still I think it's still there. We'll we'll, we'll check it. Yeah. Um, when we were adding records to the table, it only lets us use the CRN number one time. Mm -hmm. So when you wanted to delete records from the table, why does it 
need the revision. It seems that if the ID can only be in there once, all it should need is the ID. I think the pouch data. actually keeps track when you update the the value. Therefore, it gets a new revision number. So we could be we could be reusing CRN123, but changing the instructor, perhaps. We never programmed it to do that, but we could do that. So we would have a different revision number. We would have a new instructor in that record. And it seems that PouchDB keeps track of that. So we want to remove the latest version of it. So are you referring to the version That's what I don't quite understand just yet, because it's not going to leave the actual data, but it does internally keep track of revisions. So we have to tell it the latest revision to take that out. But again, I'm not sure if the original data gets stay there. I don't think so. I think it's still, it's not there, but it does keep track of revisions. Question? Uh, something like that, something like that would work, but this one is applying to the whole form. There was a. Well, I know, but like we did the, because we just did the other element, like you have the CRM, and that input box element, and we also use the dot reset instead of dot value. And how would you get a null value from the pouch? Is there like a, a one way is better than the other? Or is it both kind of accomplish the same thing? Is it similar anything? It's only one thing. Oftentimes, what is better than something else depends on a variety of factors because perhaps one is slower, uses more resources internally, and such. So, uh, from my research of trying to put this together for us, this is what I came up with, and there's you know, probably other ways to do it. I can't say which is better than the other, but uh, we, we're always free to try other methods. Sure. At this point, I think we can we can at least give it a try. We haven't dealt with what if you're trying to delete a class that doesn't exist. That'll be an else, but I want to see if we're working so far, because of course there's a lot of opening and closing here, and uh, very easy to slip up on that. But I want to see if I'm on the right track myself. Show classes and uh, oops, something's missing. Um, yeah, let's look over here. <laughs> exactly. Well, what line? No, I did close it right there. This at the end is a curly brace, and it closes right there. And then, uh, yeah, this opening one closes right there. Let me check my console, but I, I thought I closed them all. Document, get element by ID, delete CRN, show classes. Did I spell that right? Show classes. Input. Say that again. Probably get. I'm probably getting an answer on my console. Let me check my console really fast. Did that work for anyone? Were you able to remove? Show classes. Not <laughs> Classes is not defined. Unexpected token line 74. That one right there, maybe. They put too many of those. Um, 74. Okay, let me give that a try. I might be. And now it's telling me 77. Okay. 
All right, so everyone, let's. Uh, if it didn't work for you, it seems that on line 74, we don't need an ending semicolon. Um, and also 77. Yeah. Nuances. All right, so try that. Show your classes. Show classes, and it shows that. And I've got class one, two, three. So I'll type one, two, three. Delete CRN. Deleted the CRN, that row, and then we showed it right away. So it looks like you removed it right at that moment. And I haven't dealt with putting remove class 6, 4, 5. We'll do that in a moment. But at least now I'm able to remove classes that I have created. If I delete 2, 3, 4, it's gone. So here's my code again. Let's see if we're all on track. Anyone need a little help? Okay. Let me zoom in right here. This is my code so far. Possible problems would be up on line 61 and everything about that delete classes.
Reduces the company. I would do 
All right, good. So let's move on. What we've got here is that this uh, deals with a positive result, right? This deals with, yes, we were able to remove the class. But what happens if you try to remove class 1, 2, 3? There's no more class 1, 2, 3. We're not getting any feedback. So now that's when we deal with the else part. We've got if, we should have else. Else is that um, uh, if this didn't happen, all else fails, so do that. It's like the last resort. Actually, I noticed something here that I have uh, different in my notes. Um, this, it seems to work here. Yes? It doesn't exist. Won't there be something in error from the first call? Well, this one is up here yeah. about... Um, that's the initial yeah, error. that's the initial one. So perhaps we should have done the error checking earlier on before the remove. You know, if at the very beginning we're not able to get the class, then give us the error. If we then did get the positive result, then that else would include this. Yeah, because the other error would only pop up if you are unable to remove it for some reason. Yes. This one is, if we are only, we're only checking here, are we able to remove it? We assume we have a class. So um, I guess either or, yeah, perhaps. It would be in, uh, invalid, and we get an error early on. Yes, and here we're kind of doing it a little bit later, but uh, it worked. We'll see. Uh, so here, actually, the way I'm, I'm going to do this is um, go to line seventy-three, where we've got the if positive response. Uh, actually, I'm going to remove that semicolon because I want else and then open curly brace and close it. Make sure you open it and close it. And I guess we semicolon it there to end that whole statement. This is what's going to display if we're not able to remove the class, assuming we got a valid class. So we'll say inside of this else, for our edification, we'll say, well, what was the error? We'll say console.log, remember that. And we'll say, well, give me whatever that error is, which we would get earlier up there. And we want to clear out that field because if it's the wrong class we don't want to keep it in that input box for the person to click delete again it's it's wrong we're going to clear it out so I'm just going to copy line 71 we want to clear out that field if they put the right class or the wrong class does it make sense to me empty that field either way so I'm going to copy that exactly as it is and paste it after console So I, I checked out in the positive sense. Oh, okay. That'll cut down a few bytes. We'll get back to that. But here, I want to then um, alert the user that uh, there's something wrong. So we'll do an alert. And we'll say the class CRN. So let's say they're trying to type 1, 2, 3, and it doesn't exist. So I'm going to say the class CRN plus the class plus does not exist. I wish to have space after CRN. Aesthetically. I, I personally like to put the CRN next to the number. But uh, do you guys see the, the point of that? That if we don't put a space here, It'll put this text and then the number right next to it. I, I like writing it like that. But notice here, I have a space there. Make sure you put a space there, or else this will have the class number right next to the word does. So it takes here spaces, and they will print. No, but you want to have a space between the class number and the CRN. You want to have the CRN 10, 20, or something. 
Yeah, we could do a call and then space. Sure. Like I said, when I whenever I write these things, I usually write it CRN123, like that, no spaces. If I want it to display like that, then I'm going to have a space. So it's going to put this text, whatever the class that the person wrote, clear out that box. Uh, this does not exist. And then maybe also nicely say, please try again. <laughs> Again, this is the beta testing. We want to we want to try to think about how many different ways can the user mess things up. All right, save and run that, and then put any uh, put any value here. Show classes, and then obviously I do not have class one two three. I'm not there. Down here, one, two, three, delete. The class here and one, two, three does not exist. Please try again. And it cleared it for us. And just to save ourselves a little bit of uh, bytes, and uh, I've also up on line 71. Actually, I, I, it was it does work to remove that because it does create it every time we show class. So it does create an empty, seems to create an empty input box. So uh, at this point, our project is more feature complete. We were able to add a class, show classes, uh, delete classes. We're going to implement that with the Android app in a moment, but we'll take a, our first break, uh, and then we'll go on. So six, it's about 7 o'clock. We'll do uh, 10 minutes. We're back at 710. Make sure all of this is working, and also make sure your Eclipse is set up so that we can start doing it there. We'll save that, and we'll be back in uh, at 7.10.